Got another video on the 2018 GMC Sierra Denali HD with the L5P 6.6 Duramax diesel. Going to be draining the entire cooling system and then I'll be replacing the Degas bottle or the coolant reservoir. And then I'll be uh, filling up the whole cooling system with some uh, fresh new coolant. First, go ahead and pop your hood. So with your hood pop, go ahead and locate your Degas bottle or your uh, coolant reservoir here on the passenger firewall. And then if you look at this cap here, we need to remove it. Uh, but this is reverse threads, so you can see the unlock there. So we need to turn this to the right. So go ahead and pull that off. And you'll want to do this with the cooling system cool. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, take a look underneath, see how we can drain this. So next, go ahead and crawl underneath the uh, passenger side here. Get you a large uh, drip pan. You may need two of them because this probably holds quite a bit of coolant. And uh, let's go ahead and locate the drain here. And so luckily, um, like I said, this is a 2018. And uh, looks like GM was smart. And they finally put a drain petcock there for the radiator. You can see the white uh, turnstile there. Normally, a lot of the GMs on these Duramaxes, you got to pull this lower radiator hose. And that's the only way of draining the cooling system. But luckily... I'm not sure if they started changing it up and uh, finally added a drain pack cock again. Um, but the issue is, you can see, so you got the little nipple there on the bottom, but this frame is right in the way. So it's really hard to get a hose on there. Um, so I got this, uh, just some clear tubing. I think it's 3 eighths and it's really flexible. So let's see if I can kind of, I'm hoping maybe get that on there just enough because if not, I don't want to make a huge mess here. So if you can get that kind of shoved on there, just to where it kind of flows into this tube into your pan. And now let's see how hard this is going to be to uh, unscrew here. You may have to move this wire out of the way here. And let's see if we can... I may have to get it. Oh, may have to get a player. May have to use a pair of pliers or something if that's really stiff. So then just start unscrewing this. And you can see it's starting to flow out of the tube here. So I'm gonna leave it kind of like that. Zoom out here. That way it just uh, doesn't make a huge mess here. So it's probably gonna take a while, but that's all right. I don't wanna get this all over my floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this drain and I got a few other things we can do while it's doing that. All right guys, so while that's draining, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna be replacing this whole tank here uh, because I got the infamous um, low coolant level coming on on the dasher even though it's full uh tried a couple different things filling that secondary tank and nothing seemed to work and it's still getting that message so i believe that sensor's bad i'm surprised gm hasn't done a recall on these yet but hopefully address it soon because i know a lot of people had issues with that so uh so i think what i'm going to do i want to disconnect both batteries because we're going to have to take off uh, all this on top here in order to access that uh, tank so on the driver's side here, I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect the uh, positive. So this just kind of snaps off here. And then uh, you can grab a 10 millimeter, get over here on your terminal. Go ahead and loosen that up, pull that off. I'll just kind of stuff a rag right there so it doesn't hit anything there. Next we need to remove this bar, but in order to access the bolts, we need to take this uh, plastic piece off here. And then this is kind of pop out of place here. So yeah, that just kind of pops out and you got these little clips here. It looks like this one may be bent a little. Somebody's had this off before. 
Next, grab a 13 millimeter. Let's go ahead and remove this uh, bolt here. Same with that one, so we can get this bar um, out of the way here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of here. And then let's see if we can uh, pop this cover off here. how this completely comes off of here or not. Let's so kind of pop that off like that. And then uh, let's go ahead and undo this hose here. And let's get this undone and maybe I can tilt this out of the way. And then grab yourself a pair of pliers. Get this hose clamp loosened up. There we go. And then see if you can just kind of tip this up out of the way here. It's kind of something like that. All right, so now let's try to get this big contraption off of here. Um, so we'll disconnect these two. Uh, these ones you won't get mixed up because you can see uh, there's kind of like a, it's kind of curled at the end there. So it goes in there and then same on that one. Um, we'll go ahead and pull these off and then uh, disconnect the negative and of course the positive. I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna have to disconnect these or if I can just tilt it up. But if you guys gotta disconnect these, you can see that's mark two, three, and then of course four is blank and then five, but you can see it's even marked on the uh, black plastic as well. So uh, just take note when you guys go to put those back together here. So first grab a 10 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this negative right here. Let's get that off of there. Just make sure you don't touch anything with it there and then I'll also pull off the positive here and then you got these clips here so you can just kind of press down slide them out one then grab yourself a 13 millimeter get these loosened I'm just gonna put the nut back so I don't lose it tilt this out of the way here let's see kind of get this back on here yeah let me just go ahead and undo these just to make make it a little easier and I'm not sure if I can pull that off because that's this whole bus bar is holding that down. So, so uh, let's see. Maybe that's enough just to get it in here a little better. So just kind of like that. Next, grab you, uh, your 13 millimeter and then go ahead and pull that bolt there for your battery hold down so we can pull the battery out of here. up on that pull that out of there then go ahead and get your battery out of here just kind of watch this watch your connectors down here that we had to remove and then as 
you can see, now we got access to the uh, tank here. So um, you can see your level sensor here. That's the one that keeps tripping uh, on the message board there in the instrument panel. So let's go ahead and disconnect that. And you can see you got that connector there. So if you just kind of pull down on that gray one and then just kind of push down as you're doing that, that'll um, clip from there. Next, grab some pliers or uh, some vice grips. Let's go ahead and get that hose clamp off of there. Slide that kind of off there. And see if you can uh, get this hose off here. It's probably going to be on there pretty good. Let me grab a pry bar. See if you can get it with a, just like a pry bar here. Kind of help you push on it as you're pulling. Gotta break that initial seal free. And I guess I should have got to stick that back on there real quick. Let me get another pan under there. Well, I was trying not to make a mess, but got another pan under there, and then I'll stick this rag here just to collect whatever comes out of here. Okay, so I think that's pretty much done draining. So now we can go ahead and pull that bolt there. So grab a 10 millimeter, go ahead and pull that bolt. So now we should be able to uh, pull this out. I think it might slide towards the front. Yep. Slide that towards the front, and you can see it has these little feet on the bottom there that fit into those grooves down there, and it just slides towards the front. So before I put the new tank in, I'm just going to go ahead and wipe this all up, get it nice and clean, maybe grab the vacuum, vacuum up some of them leaves and stuff real quick. All right, guys, so as you can see, got that all cleaned up, um, and I just want to show you, just keep an eye on your, uh, your coolant down here. Because you can see we're starting to get kind of full there, uh, but it's still draining. And I believe this is like a 20-quart jug or uh, container, I mean. So just get, uh, make sure you're keeping an eye on that. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our old and new uh, reservoir. So I went with the uh, Genuine GM uh, 84257137. I got this off Amazon. I think it was right around 100 bucks, And... Uh, you can see it's pretty much the same thing. Um, for the secondary overflow, they give you a new cap, but they don't give you a new cap for the top, so we'll have to reuse that one. And then, of course, you got your breather hose they give you, and then you can see the uh, new sensor there, which is integrated with the uh, reservoir. So you can't just swap out that sensor, so you gotta buy this whole uh, reservoir here. So, And uh, you can see how kind of dirty it is inside there. Um, this truck has, I think, a little over 60,000, but I just figured it's uh, reaching that five year mark. And GM recommends you replace the coolant every 150,000 over five years, whatever comes first. So that's why I'm draining the whole cooling system, and we'll put some fresh stuff in. And you can just see, see all that sediment too, how dirty it is in there. So that's another reason why. So let's go ahead and get this on. So grab your new reservoir and uh, again remember them little feet at the bottom there that you'll get into place and then slide it towards the firewall just kind of set it 
down on here. I'm not sure if my feet are lining up or not. in place grab your 10 millimeter bolt go ahead and stick that in then you can plug in your sensor here then go ahead and connect your hose back up here i can still hear air uh, breathing out of here from it draining but we should be all right with the cap still off just go ahead and get that back on. And you can see there's like a white notch right there. So just kind of line that up with that. Get your vice grips. Just kind of like that. Looks like I may need to just move it up just a hair. And then just double check. That looks good. Next, go ahead and grab your battery. Just remember positive is gonna be toward the front, negative toward the firewall. stuff down here. Then go ahead and grab your uh, hole down there. Go ahead and get that on. And tighten that up. Then get your bus bar back into place. So this just kind of sits on here. Like that. And then get your uh, all these back on here. Tighten those down. Go ahead and plug these in. Make sure they click. Get your uh, terminal all the way down and tighten that up with your 10 millimeter. Make sure that's tight. You can grab your negative cable here. cover back on here. Get my hose stuck over here. And we'll just snap on there like that. And again, I'll go ahead and wait to connect uh, this hose here. Let me zoom out. I'll wait to connect this hose here and leave that cap off because that system's still draining. 
So that's helping uh, get the air and everything out. Next, you can go ahead and get this uh, bar back in place here. Then go ahead and grab your uh, trim piece there. And then you got this little tab here, which will slide down under this right here. So make sure you get that in place. And then it kind of just pushes back. Just kind of like that. Next, go ahead and uh, hook up your other battery here on the driver's side. guys so you can see that it's still kind of draining there um, and I can hear it still gurgling in the radiator so there's still some in there so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let this drain a little bit longer and then I'll come back all right guys so it looks like it finally uh, finished draining here it's about as much as we're gonna get out of it so let's go ahead and uh, tighten up that drain petcock so go ahead and get your tube out of here And you can see, luckily, it uh, didn't make a huge mess. A lot better than uh, having to pull that lower radiator hose off. So go ahead and tighten up that up. Just twist that to the right. And get that drain valve tightened up. Just like that. And I'll just take a rag, just any that did spill, just so we can check that, make sure we don't have leaks. And it's all done here. And since that's the all done draining, let's go ahead and uh, get this breather hose back on here. Get that in place, get your hose clamp. snap it back into here like that all right guys so let's go ahead and take a look and see how much came out so like i said earlier this is a 20 quart container if i zoom in here you can see the 20 quart mark but if i go ahead and uh just kind of tilt this you can see right there that's the 15 quart mark so what i'm thinking between what's in this container and uh, what kind of spilled on the ground there, I'm going to say about 15 and a half to 16 quarts is what came out total. And uh, what I'll be using to refill it, so I got uh, this Peak Dex Cool, and it's the concentrate. I got three jugs of this, or gallons. Got it off Walmart.com, same with the distilled water. So I'll put a link in the description for it. But I prefer to use the concentrate over the 50-50 uh, premix stuff. Because this um, is about two bucks more a gallon than the 50 50 mixed. So, on the 50 50, all you're doing is pretty much paying for water. So, I prefer to go this route and then I pick up uh, just a gallon of distilled water. You want to use distilled water because it doesn't boil. And uh, so, I'll mix that 50 50 with this and that'll give me two gallons and then again, two gallons. So, we'll probably only need these two gallons. I got the third just in case. But uh, that's the method I prefer to use. And uh, I'll mix this into a five-gallon bucket because uh, I'll be using this OEM Tools 24444. I got this off of Amazon a while back. I'll put a link in the description. I've used it on some of my previous vehicles, and um, this thing is awesome. It makes it a lot easier. Plus, uh, what it does is it pulls a vacuum on the cooling system, and then it uses that vacuum to fill it back up. And uh, that way you get no uh, air in the system or anything. It burps it for you and everything. Um, 
because on these new uh, vehicles, a lot of times if you get air in the cooling system, it um, starts to create cavitation, which you don't want. So um, like I said, I'll put a link in the description for it. It's an awesome tool. Used it many times and um, I'll go ahead and show you how to use it. So let's go ahead and uh, start getting some of this hooked up. So I got uh, this assortment of like rubber caps. Um, I think Dorman makes it. I'll put a link in the description, but it's just an assortment here. And uh, so like I said, what I'll do is I'll, you want to get a nice tight fit because you want this to be able to pull a vacuum. So I'll take one of these white ones here, just kind of stick that over that. That way you'll be able to pull a vacuum. And I'll, I'll show you on the old, old one where I'm going to stick the, uh, the plug for down there. So here's our old reservoir and this is what I'm talking about. So we're gonna have to plug this one as well because this is kind of a breather as well for the secondary reservoir uh, that's built into this. So again, you can just use your one of the white ones here and this should just fit over it just like that. So let me go ahead and stick this one on the one on the truck. So you just gotta kind of go off a of feel with your vacuum plug here. And get down in there. Get that on and then also just make sure this cap is tight. And uh, this is normal threads on this one down here. So just make sure that's tight. So now with our uh, vacuum plugs on there. So you have a couple, actually quite a few of these uh, rubber adapters. So I'm gonna try this 42 millimeter in here because you want this to be a nice tight fit. That way you don't lose air. So just kind of get that in there if you can. So I think that won't work. And then just kind of push down. It's like I said, you want to have a nice tight fit on that. And then go ahead and grab your uh, tool with your Venturi valve on there. And I'll probably face it this way since I'll pull coolant over here. And actually, I might just have to do this. And what you'll do, just kind of push down into that plug there. And then what you want to do is turn this knob clockwise and you'll feel starting to get harder to turn <clears throat> so then you can't really go anymore go ahead and stop and then just pull up on it a little bit make sure you got a good seal and you can see that ain't going anywhere so we should be good there so I'm gonna route this uh, coolant over here and you can see, got this little filter and screen so you don't suck anything up um, if you had any debris in your coolant. And then you just wanna make sure all these valves are closed for right now. I'll go ahead and uh, get my compressor and we'll hook the uh, air valve up here. So then go ahead and hook up your air hose here for your compressor. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, start opening this up. So what you'll wanna do is you'll open this one and then we'll open this one and that'll start uh, pulling a vacuum out. It's gonna get loud because the compressor and everything's gonna turn on and you got air coming out of here. You wanna make sure this one stays off for your coolant because we're not filling it yet. We wanna make sure we can pull the vacuum and everything first. And uh, you wanna go, you keep checking your gauge, you'll go until it stops and it's not pulling anymore then you'll know it's uh, pretty much done pulling the vacuum. And uh, you'll also take a look at your uh, some of your coolant hoses and you'll see they'll actually collapse when it's pulling that vacuum on it. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up real quick. Like I said, it's gonna get loud so you guys might not be able to hear me. Watch that um, gauge. You can see it's starting to climb right now. 
So I'll go ahead and uh, let it pull a vacuum on it real quick. And then you can actually see, you can see this uh, radiator hose, the upper one is collapsed. And then down below, you can see same thing, kind of hard to see, but you can see that radiator hose is uh, collapsed as well. All right guys, so I let this run for a few minutes and uh, you can see on the gauge there, it doesn't seem to be going uh, down anymore from uh, negative 18 or so. So I think it's pulled the full vacuum on it. So let me go ahead and uh, shut this valve off here. Actually, I'll close this one first. Same with this one. And let me go ahead and shut my compressor off. And so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and you just wanna make sure that doesn't uh, go down because if that starts going down, then you got a leak in your cooling system. So I'll come back and uh, we'll make sure it still stays there at uh, negative 18. And while I wait on that, I'm gonna go ahead and fill my five gallon uh, bucket. So just take a clean, you know, any kind of bucket. I wiped it out and everything. Just make sure it's uh, spotless, nothing in there. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a gallon of the concentrate here. And I'll go ahead and pour that in here. And then I'll take my gallon of distilled water. Go ahead and pour that in. And then I'll go ahead and do another gallon of this and then another gallon of distilled water and see where we're sitting. Okay, so just like that. So that right there is uh, four gallons of 50-50 pre-mix pretty much uh, or 16 quarts. So I'll start out with that and then we'll see if we need to add any more or not. All right, guys, so as you can see, the um, that hasn't dropped at all. So it looks like the uh, system is sealed up pretty good. No issues there. So now we can go ahead and start filling. Um, I just like to just put this on a ladder here with the bucket, and then we'll go ahead and get our uh, coolant, um, this down in there. And then a lot of times that'll float to the top. So I like to use a uh, pair of ice grips to just kind of squeeze it on the end here just to keep that down at the bottom because you don't want this uh, to go dry and start sucking air and then uh, ruin the whole process. So let me grab a pair of ice grips real quick. So like I said, just try to get this shoved down in there to the very bottom. You can see how it kind of wants to just float up here. So let me move my ladder a little bit. So I just do uh, something kind of like that you can see it's there at the bottom and then just lightly squeeze that don't want to pinch it off or anything but you can see coolant can still flow through there and then also got a so this is from a previous project um so this is already mixed so i got this ready just in case this starts to get uh, pretty low there and i need to add more so just make sure you got another jug or just a little bit just in case that starts to get low okay so one more thing before we start filling is um so you'll notice in this line here for our coolant, um, once we open this valve, it's gonna suck this air from the, uh, where the, uh, it sits in the bottom of the bucket. So you still got air into this line. So it's gonna suck that in. So what we wanna do is we'll, we'll open up our air valve and then we'll still pull a vacuum on it, but we'll also open this, slowly open it, and then you'll see the coolant start to draw in and once that coolant reaches here, go ahead and shut that off real quick. And then we can disconnect our air and everything. And uh, then we'll be able to start filling it all the way. We just wanna make sure we get this air um, out of the line real quick here. So, so like I said, go ahead and uh, open this back up. Same with this one. And then you can go ahead and slowly open this. Okay, so just like that. So now it's off, so go ahead and shut this off. Same with this one. And then you can disconnect this whole thing here. 
get that out of the way. And now we should be able to start uh, filling. So I'm gonna kinda just go ahead and open this. And I wanna show you guys here. So you can see our gauge, we're still at uh, negative 18 there. So go ahead and uh, slowly open this and make sure you keep this one closed and that'll start drawing cooling or cooling into the cooling system. So just like that and you'll see your gauge will start to go down. And then also keep an eye on your coolant level here inside your bucket. And if you need to, you can always shut this off so you can uh, refill if you have to. And you can see on the gauge here, it'll stay where it's at as well. So let me go ahead and uh, we'll open this up and then you'll wanna, you'll just leave it until it goes all the way to zero. And uh, then you'll know the uh, system's full and everything. And then also your uh, coolant hoses will uh, be full of coolant again, not collapsed. So let's go ahead and open this and uh, keep an eye on the level there. And you can open it just a little bit if you need to, if you don't want it to go too fast. So you can do something like that. That way you can really watch this level. And then you can see it um, starting to fill that uh, back part of the reservoir as well. I had to reposition my uh, vice grips there. But you can see still got plenty of coolant. And then our gauge is still going there. All right guys, so I did have to add uh, probably about half of this gallon into there. You can see we are starting to reach, almost getting to zero there. You can see our tank's getting full. And just keep an eye on this. Add a little more. And then double check up here. As you can see now we're uh, just about to hit zero there. So probably right there, once that hits zero, then you know the uh, system is full. So now you go ahead and shut this valve off. Go ahead and turn this counterclockwise. Loosen that up. And pull this out. And then you go ahead and pull this plug off. Same with this one here. Connect your breather hose back on there. You go ahead and uh, put your cap on. Remember, this is reverse threads. And then you can uh, pull this plug off of here down. That vacuum plug there. And then if you'll notice, you can see we are spot on right at the full level here so that's why that um that little tool is it's awesome i mean it gets it right to the right amount pulls the vacuum that way you got no air in the system it's perfect and then you can also take a look show you take a look at your uh, coolant hoses so you can see they're not collapsed anymore now so we've got coolant in there so next i'm going to go ahead and start it And then you can go ahead and uh, turn your heater on high so we can get it flowing through the heater core and all that. And then I'll have to get it up to temperature there. Uh, don't pay attention to the uh, other message here. I got another video coming out on that. I got to fix a few other things on this. So uh, go ahead and let this idle. We'll let it uh, get up to temp there and uh, get those uh, thermostats open. And then if you take a look, you can see our level hasn't changed at all. So that's good. 
right guys so as you can see we're up to a normal operating temperature now also got a uh, hot air coming out of the vents here and then also the uh, low coolant light hasn't come on at all uh, since it's been run and so I think that took care of that issue as well all right so just go ahead and uh, take a look underneath the hood here again real quick with it warm and you can see our level hasn't really changed at all it's pretty much the same so what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and let this sit overnight, let it cool off, and that level may drop just a little bit. Uh, probably not much since we use the uh, vacuum system. But if it does, um, you'll just want to go right, right there at the top of the arrows and just add some in the morning when it's cold if it needs it. All right, so that's going to do it for the video. Again, this was a 2018 GMC Sierra Denali HD with the L5P 6.6 .6 Duramax diesel. And I went ahead and drained the entire cooling system and then replaced the coolant reservoir or the degas bottle. And then also uh, put some fresh coolant in using the uh, OEM tool uh, vacuum coolant filler. And uh, so when it's all said and done, I used right at about 18 quarts. So I think you'll get by if you buy uh, two gallons of the concentrate and then uh, a gallon of the 50-50 mix. And then, of course, two gallons of distilled water to mix with the concentrate. And I think you'll be all right. So right at uh, 18 quarts pretty much is what I use. So hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to the channel? Check out some of my other videos. Actually doing uh, quite a few repairs to this truck while I have it. And uh, check those out once I get them uploaded. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.